Hey guys, Ryan with Gramophone. I'm here in Worthing, England. Honored to be at the Bowers and Wilkins facility with a legend, Andy Kerr. Real quick, we just want to get into a little bit uh, for your folks at home about Andy, what his uh, career progression has been here and uh, and what he does now. Maybe a fun fact uh, to to keep it light. Um, uh, legend, obviously, I feel hugely embarrassed by that for a start, right? So, um, so hi everyone. Um, I work... I'm privileged to work in the research and development facility alongside a bunch of people who are all infinitely more clever than I am. Um, so I work as part of the the product team. Um, I have a bunch of good colleagues there who look after what is called product management. Mm -hmm. um, product management is about the uh, the delivery of products in a tidy manner, working alongside the engineering team. So yep. if you said to me, we need a new type of loudspeaker, the combination of what I do, which is essentially help understand what the customer needs, understand what trends are out there, what technologies we have at our disposal, and write essentially a requirement. Yeah. And a product management team will do is set essentially the bar, and then they'll deliver the timeline over, let's say, two years, three years, okay. working in parallel with the engineers. The engineers are a hugely talented range of individuals running across a whole series of different disciplines. So you have people who are responsible for industrial design, how something looks. You have people who are responsible for mechanical design, what it's made of, how it goes together. You have people responsible for, in the case of a loudspeaker like this, acoustics. Um, they do driving design, transducers, um, and all those sorts of things. The important point to get across, um, and I do thank you very much for, for what you just said, but the important point to get across is everything that we're doing is the collective output of a huge number of people. Yep. It's a, a privilege to be part of the team. There's a large number of them there. Um, my um, my fun fact, if there is a fun fact, is if you're familiar with Beaker from the Muppets. Yeah, 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 yeah. of course. Yeah. So when I first started a long time ago, um, going into the boardroom there, and I was in my first team meeting, I realized I was quite obviously the biggest idiot in the room. You know what I mean? It's the first time you kind of look around the room and you realize like every person in there has at least yeah, yeah. one PhD. Yeah. And maybe some cases more. And right. you're thinking, wow. Um, and yeah, I felt like Beaker in the Muppets. Do you know what oh, I mean? I'm kind of like surrounded by that. So I still to this day have it as a screensaver on my phone. Sure. Just to kind of remind you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like remember who you're with, remember who you're surrounded by. Um, never forget the privilege if you see what I mean. Yeah. And I think being surrounded by brilliant minds like elevates the bar and raises. It's, it, it's, and listen, it's an incredible place to work. Yeah. It is an incredible place to work. I'm not going to say it's always an easy place to sure. work, right? Because um, engineers are, are, are wonderful to yeah. work with in terms of problem solving, but they are also uh, obsessive about sure. problem solving. I think one of the, again, the, team, the teams in product management have to do with is occasionally have to kind of take the engineer and kind of go, right, whoa, enough. Yeah, you know, if if we don't stop soon, we're we're never going to launch the product. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. So so it's about setting that that if you like detail brief, being rigorous to that detail brief, and then ensuring that in a set number of years, you arrive with something. Yeah, you know, you actually the product has it. to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for that context, that information. Sure. Um, the second one, obviously the big announcement we're all excited about with the 801 D4 signature, mm -hmm. the 805 D4 signature, two beautiful colors. Yeah. I got to see them in person, just lovely, but a lot going on under the hood, mm -hmm. upgrades in the drivers, upgrades in the crossover. Can you give us a little more detail and especially for the folks at home? The great thing about what, what we have access to now is we have a combination of pretty powerful uh, measurement tools, which allow us to really accurately, and I mean at a microscopic level, yeah. understand how structures are behaving. Um, and we also have very powerful simulation packages. We use a package called Console FEA, which is a, a multi-physics finite element analysis yeah. package. Sounds very complicated. What it means is we can we can simulate a structure in three dimensions, yeah. and we can understand how energy is moving through that structure. Now, now why do you want to do that? Well. The most important part from a loudspeaker's perspective is the cabinet. I know it might seem the drive units, but right. the drive units are only as good as the cabinet that houses them. So you will recall, I'm sure the guys yeah. at home will recall, <laughs> that over the years we've spent a lot of time working on different gener generations of 800 series to make the cabinet better. The D3 was, as you might recall, massively better than yeah. the 2, for example. We generated a lot of cool simulations to show that at that time. So the focus on signature was taking what was already our current state of the art, in terms of cabinet and then kind of taking it to the next level. So both models have um, completely re-engineered top sections, which are stiffer in terms of the way that they behave mm -hmm. and are also acoustically damped in terms of how the panel on the top section here interacts with the structure at the top. 
the outcome is mechanically quieter. And mechanically quieter essentially means less unwanted vibration, less unwanted noise coming off the system. As a result of that, you essentially hear more of what you're supposed to hear. This right here being an 805, um, the other significant change is uh, design of completely new tweeter grill mesh. Now look, a, a tweeter grill mesh doesn't seem like a big thing. Right. In terms of its importance to the loudspeaker, think tire on a car. Yep. I like that. That doesn't seem like a big thing either, right? But it makes a big yeah. difference, right? Um, that's exactly what's going on. Okay. So, so the diaphragm, the drive unit behind that tweet of grill mesh is now given uh, a structure which, from when you get up close, you can see there's a significantly different structure, which is more open, but it's still just as strong in terms of the way that it protects the dome as previously. Uh, but the end game, and what well, you've heard yeah. for yourself, is a more open, more spatially balanced sound with, um, at the same time, a degree of additional refinement. Okay, so structural stuff um, in the big model, the 801, also extends to a revision to the port at the bottom, which is now constructed from cast aluminium. Um, and then both models have completely new main drive units. In the case of this 805 right here, the cone is the same, but the, the motor system behind it is completely upgraded. Um, in the case of the 801, it's the base units. They're completely updated and upgraded again uh, with improved metal component parts, which provide for uh, lower distortion. Yeah, significantly lower distortion. We're very excited about that. And then the last major change is, as you would expect, which is something that we've done inherently over time for all signature products, is upgraded the cross ohm components. Um, so the outcome of it all is a, a mechanically quieter, uh, acoustically more open loudspeaker with upgraded drive units and a cleaner, more transparent signal path. And the end game of all that clearly is just better sound. I've been honored to be able to listen to a wide variety of Bowers and Wilkins speakers throughout the years. And one thing that's always resonated with me, the voice, the sound of Bowers and Wilkins mm -hmm. is always distinct. It's always clear and, and musical. How's that voicing maintained and stayed that? It's a great question. So our current um, chief acoustic engineer, um, is somebody who has a continuity of work going all the way back to when John Bowers was alive. So essentially, I think the, the, the methodology and the approach and the way of working um, has been cast in stone since the start of the business. So we, um, let me give you some insight into that. First, of course, we, we clearly respect other brands. We spend some time benchmarking yeah. other brands, but the way that we work first and foremost is benchmarking against ourselves. So our target is always to try and do better than what we've currently made. Yeah. Um, every change that's made throughout the loudspeaker is an evaluated in isolation as an individual change. So should it be, for example, that you're going to change the terminal tags on the back from one design to yeah. another, then you just listen to that. You don't make six changes or seven changes or eight changes. You listen to the one thing that you'll go to. Yeah, yeah. And you understand that and understand whether it's good or bad. Um, everything's based on reference-based working, so we have a reference system I think some people will probably find quite quite old, mm -hmm. if I'm honest with you, um, because it hasn't changed a great deal over time. But the reason, of course, it hasn't is it's allowed us to keep that consistency of approach and okay. that methodology and that way of working. So if you combine the essentially established longevity of the system with the established longevity of the way of working, with the established longevity of our chief acoustic engineer, you kind of got some insight into yeah. how we can produce products that over time just continuously develop upon the last one rather than perhaps take a sudden S turn into a different direction. Sure. Um, the end part of it all is, and I don't want to kind of oversimplify what I'm saying here, but it's probably important. I think measurement is clearly an important facet of everything that we do, I think, that of every loudspeaker engineering team. Naturally, yeah. But at the same time, Music's key as well. Musicality, um, yeah. There is a, 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 a healthy, in the engineering sense, tension. I don't mean actually fighting. Sure. In the engineering, <laughs> between um, research and development, in terms of what could and should be the right approach, yeah, and what the humans who listen to it at the end yep. in the acoustic team think is good. Yeah. Um, I've heard it a ton of times where you get a product which, in theory, measures great. Yeah, from an engineering perspective, and then we put it down the room and we listen to it, and we go, oh, and that yeah, falls flat. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think uh, I guess what I'm trying to say here is that no individual part of the machine is more important than the other. No individual part of the team is more important than the other. They all work together, kind of symbiotically, to try and create the outcome. Yeah, and I think you can draw. I mean, you said it yourself. I think you can draw a kind of red line through through a heritage of Bowers and Wilkins products going from Absolutely. back. Absolutely, and there's no question. Um, 
the last thing. To some extent, we're, we're tuning for ourselves. I don't mean that to be dismissive of clearly you guys or, or you guys, but that's what I'm trying to say about that is no one is tuning to try to create the something that's superficially impressive. Yeah. Or indeed something that measures A1. Yeah. Uh, what we're trying to do is deliver something that makes a lot of people who like music and live and breathe music enjoy music. Yeah. Um, and the way that we do that is by listening to a lot of music, right? Yeah. Um, so, so the outcome, I think, is is as much about engineering and technology as it is about people and passion. That's awesome. I think it kind of brings it, you know, full circle. So that's, I really appreciate that insight. Um, Andy, it's been a pleasure. Shoot. Um, thank you for taking the time to, to do this interview with us. No problem. Awesome. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You can see all of our great brands at gramophone.com and shop at Sky by Gramophone, where you'll get secure checkout and fast free shipping straight to your door. And come visit us at Timonium, Columbia, and Gaithersburg, Maryland, and hear what you've been missing. Check out our Kitchen Design Center in Hunt Valley, too. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.